So I want you to do something that I'll never want you to do again, and that's I want you to pull tight on the lead, and I want you to look at your dog and take a slow step and start walking. Let's go. Nice. It's a beautiful piece. <laughs> yep. And see, and he, he pulls himself out of it, too. But that's pacing. Go do ahead. it. Now do it again, coming back this way. Okay. You're looking at him, pulling up tight, and he goes into a pace. That's very typical. Mm. Now, I, what I want you to do this time is the way you, you should do it, and that's no eye contact. I want you to back away from your dog. I want you to establish and maintain that communication and gate him down and back. No pace. No pace. So <clears throat> again, most of the time pacing is caused by a tight lead and eye contact that's putting pressure on the dog and that's making them go into a pace. Now, if you have a situation where you've created a muscle memory and that is you've caused a problem where the dog is now pacing and the dog is used to that, then there is one good way to get him out of that pace. Some people tell you to pop the lead or yank on them or something to make them hop like that. I don't like doing that because I don't want that lead to be tight on that dog at any point in time. So what I would like to do is that, let's say I'm the judge. So if I'm the judge and you have him facing either his muzzle that way or his muzzle this way, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna just back up and go. So go ahead, yep, so he's facing diag or, or across from the judge right here and you're going to just back up that way and go. So go ahead and do that. And that makes a perfect gate, even if you have a chronic pacer. Bring him back. Now let me explain why that works. If a dog starts off here and you put pressure, then they're gonna have that pressure and they're gonna pace both legs going on this side. If you have a situation with a chronic pacer and the judge is here and the dog is like this, when you pull on the lead, what happens is it automatically puts him into a gate like this. When, when you have a dog facing straight and you pull on the lead, it's not gonna fix that pace. So that's how you can fix that chronic pacer. The key is to get your dog properly, stop looking at your dog to, that creates that pressure, and you won't run into that problem like that. I am so proud of you. All right, high five. And I want pictures of your wins at your next show. Yeah. All right, so any other things that you're having some problems with or some questions or anything like that before your next show? Questions. Gating. Um, so I'm just trying to talk through my question right now. Mm -hmm. We've been having problems skating, so mm -hmm. I'm really trying to focus on, you know, square body posture mm -hmm. and just go. Right. Sometimes, um, you want me to that's okay. Sometimes I feel like this breed especially can get caught up in that just string them along, bat out of hell kind of look. Right. And I know that that is not correct. Right. However... You know, I still want my dog to have that self carriage when we go, especially in that group right. room. You know, right. you bring out extra space. I want to like make let him party out. out of it and let right. him out. And I have struggled with that in a couple. Okay, of years there. I can tell you right now that one of the reasons, one of the things that's holding you back from achieving that, mm -hmm. is your palm position. Okay. You you still are. Sometimes you'll have your palm forward. A lot of times you're having your palm like this. Okay. So you're, you're not consistently communicating with him, telling him what you want to do. Now remember, in the beginning, that's visual. He'll see that your palm is forward. He'll see when you turn your palm and, and all these other things. Mm -hmm. When he gets to the point where he's leading out where you want him to be, mm -hmm. then it changes from visual to him sensing this. Like for instance, you're gating forward like this, and when he feels you go like that, 
he's going to feel that on the lead. He'll feel a certain amount of pressure, and he'll go into that turn. And then you'll have control of him when he's out there three, four, five feet in front of you. But you're not going to get that until you get to the point where you're consistent with your palm direction. Because when your palm is going forward like this, it's, he's visually seeing that that means let's go forward. Yes. When your palm turns to go into this turn, he'll feel that pressure and he'll remember what that feels like. So you have to create that solid foundation of that communication with your hand before you go to that. Okay. And I would probably um, set up some cones and have him weave through the cones, go back to the basics of that. So you really start following that. I would weed him off of the food in the hand. Okay. So, so now he can focus on what's going on. You want to get him to the point where it's so subtle, where he's gating like this, but he sees your hand in the corner of his eye. And if you go like this, he knows to make that turn. So right now, you're still kind of gating him kind of in that beginning stage, like a puppy where you would train that puppy with your hand right in front of that muzzle. Mm -hmm. So you're going to try to wean him off of that. I would say that would be a great homework assignment for the week before next weekend show is weaning some distance, still establishing and maintaining that communication, but weaning, weaning some distance between his hand and his muzzle.